A horizontal section of narrow pipe is filled with water whose flow speed is negligible. The gauge pressure, gauge, inside the pipe is four atmospheres. Okay, we'll have to convert that to SI units, Pascals. There is a pinhole-sized leak in the wall of the pipe. The water exits the hole with a speed of V2. What is V2 for the limit check? Investigate what happens to V2. The pressure gauge drops to zero. Okay. So this is, first thing we're gonna do is draw a picture because that is what we always do. So this is pipe, probably shouldn't have been blue because it gets confused with water. So we're gonna use green for water just to add some contrast. I know, terrible decisions in life, the small things kind of cascade, snowball effect. So inside we have um, pressure. So I'm gonna say pressure gauge so the idea with pressure gauge is it's the pressure read by the gauge pressure is almost always read as a differential just from for practical purpose and purposes in life and so what this really means is this is pressure absolute plus pressure atmosphere so when this says for atm for atmospheres what this really means is this is one atmosphere is um uh, 101,000 uh, pascals for one atmosphere. That's just a conversion factor. And we're going to do add one atmosphere because we're adding the pressure of atmosphere to convert from gauge to absolute. So pressure, I'll call this pressure initial because it's pressure inside the pipe. This will be pressure final because that's where the fluid ends up at finally. So pressure initial is four times 101,000. I'm just gonna call that 404,000, and that's in Pascals, plus one atmosphere. And you might be kind of worried that like, wow, the units don't match up, don't you do the same units? True, very reasonable, you'll see where I'm going with this. Um, and then pressure final, where the water ends up, is just gonna be outside the pipe, which is at one atmosphere. So you could kind of sort of ignore pressure gauge and just be like, well, I'll work with it. I'd recommend not. It's good to get a, uh, I like to convert gauge to atmosphere, to absolute every time. You just make fewer mistakes. Um, this is a pretty straightforward problem, but there's enough nuance in these kind of problems that it's worth understanding and going through as many details as you can. All right, so this is basically a Bernoulli's question. Bernoulli is just conservation of energy. I have a memory of a goldfish, so I try to memorize as few formulas as possible. So I'm just gonna do conservation of energy. So you have energy kinetic plus energy potential plus I'm gonna say energy pressure equals some constant. By constant, I mean you can say the initial equals final. So I'm gonna write that out just a little bit differently. One half mv squared plus mgh, sorry, I didn't know that plus pressure times volume. That one might look new to you, and it's C constant. Not speed of light constant, just a generic constant, like the kind you see with like an integral. Um, pressure times volume might feel new to you. Um, it's not new. So the idea is uh, work equals uh, integral f dot dx, which you should know, and basically pressure equals force divided by area, not getting in too deep here, but basically you can rearrange that to be, that's supposed to be an integral, pressure times um, derivative with respect to volume. So integral P dot dV, you got constant pressure, pressure times volume. Work is pressure times volume, where pressure is force divided by area, newtons per square meter. Okay, so we got that out of the way. Now we're going to take our energy balance equation that we have here, divide everything by volume, I put little bars up on top of the bottom of volume, just so I don't get it confused with velocity, which is easy to do and I would recommend avoiding. So another quick slight sidebar, mass divided by volume is density. The mnemonic I use for this is density, symbol rho, equals love, put an arrow through it, you have mass on top, uh, V on bottom, mass divided by volume. So density is mass divided by volume. So this is the same as one half rho velocity squared 
And I'm going to call this initial, just so I'm going to actually, because I'm going to use this equation. Um, rho gravity times height initial plus pressure initial equals one half, that's supposed to be a two, one half rho velocity final squared plus rho g height final plus pressure final. All right, so now this is our equation we're going to use. We're going to start canceling things out. We are told that the initial speed is zero, or about zero, negligible. So they use V1, I use V0, same idea, zero. Um, they also say specifically that it is a horizontal pipe. Horizontal meaning it doesn't go up or down. Therefore, its change in height is zero. Therefore, the uh, gravity, uh, the, the energy due to, potential energy due to gravity is the same on both sides. Therefore, you can cancel it out. We're left with initial pressure and final pressure and this term right there. So I'm going to write this then as 404,000 pascals plus pressure atmosphere, which is about 14.7 PSI or 101,000 pascals, doesn't matter. One half uh, rho v final squared plus the, and the pressure outside the pipe is going to be pressure atmosphere, which is convenient, which is why I left it on both sides, because it's going to cancel. All right. So then we want velocity of the water, which is going to be 2 times 404,000 divided by the density of the water. Density of the water is going to be uh, 1,000 kilograms per square per cubic meter, and I took the radical there. I know terrible boardsmanship. I apologize. It should be more uh, consistent on that. Not so. You're not the idea is you're never supposed to write something on a board that a student can't easily do on their notes. So it kind of ruins. It. Not important. You get what I'm saying. All right. This right there. Calculator. Can I do that in my head? Maybe. I'm not going to. So we have this. Uh, ooh. Can I do that? Click, click, there we go. Simplify life. So the square root of 808, uh, of 2 times 404, not found. That gives us a value of about 28.43 meters per second. So that is going to be the speed of the water leaving the pipe. All right, pretty messy. Um, let's go back and talk about what I did because. Um, kind of a recap so have pipe water in it not moving quickly and so we're going to convert the energy of basically the pressure inside the pipe into kinetic energy of water shooting out of the pipe so conservation of energy i.e bernoulli's we write out our conservation of energy but now we're including pressure times volume divide everything by volume and that gives us what's traditionally thought of as bernoulli's equation uh, we cancel out everything that cancels out. We wrote, we wrote pressure gauge in terms of an absolute pressure. So basically pressure absolute plus pressure atmosphere. And the reason pressure gauge exists is because that's just kind of, pressure is almost always a differential pressure. That's just how things are measured. And so that's why you run into this pressure gauge thing when you're talking about reality. Um, do everything. And yep, it, um, yeah, we math it and solve it out. I'm gonna write this in terms of symbols. So that's two times pressure gauge over density of water. And so we wanna find the limit, the pressure gauge goes to zero. So the limit as pressure gauge, it's er, pressure G goes to zero. Uh, the square root of two pressure gauge over rho. We plug in zero up there, that equals zero, and that makes sense. And that's gonna be equal to velocity final. So the idea then is for our limiting situation, our limit check, if you have a pipe without any pressure in it and you get a hole in it, water's not gonna shoot out, which feels intuitively correct and is mathematically consistent with what we did. So I hope that helped. See you next time.